when you've been faced with some really challenging conditions, super cold or just being absolutely exhausted and worked by a route, you have implemented Wim Hof style breathing. And I'd love to hear uh, how you've used that, like under what situations you've used it. And I haven't studied Wim Hof, though I've certainly heard of Wim Hof and, and that type of um, technique. Uh, I'd love to get, if I could, a little overview of essentially what's happening physically and physiologically and mentally when you are doing that. Yeah, essentially it does break down to controlling your body through your mind um, because our minds are so powerful and that comes down to breath. And the breath work that I learned through working with Wim Hof actually at a Red Bull high performance camp was the heat that you can generate through breath holds and also breath releases and high frequency breathing exercises. A lot for me is preventing um, super fast paced tempo breathing. So when I start to shiver, it's about like taking long, calm breaths so that I don't go into that shiver mode. Because when you start shivering, your teeth are chattering. It's like, really hard on your nervous system and then that cold sensation is hard to get back control of so for me it's more like if I feel cold it'll be like also that mental switch of like and I feel it in climbing too like if I'm climbing and I say all of a sudden to myself oh god I'm so pumped then like instantly I'm falling (laughs) um versus if I don't allow my mind to go there Um, and it's almost like mind trickery. Like you're not cold. It's actually fine. You're fine. Um, mantras like that help me a lot too. So, um, one of the breathing exercises that we did with Wim Hof was just like lying on a floor and doing long breath holds and almost like asphyxiation of oxygen. Um, but it was really wild because I've never had an outer body experience like I did through that um, experience. And that would then be like quicker breathing and then long breath holds and kind of a balance of that. But in my implementation outside, it's more like long, deep breaths and controlling my mental state through breathing of just like keeping calm. All right, y'all, quick second here to shout out the sponsor of this video, which is Status Audio. Look, they sent me a set of these between 3A and C earbuds. I'm sure you've seen these around. There's a lot of hype around these earbuds. So I was a little bit skeptical. But after giving them a shot on and off the wall, I can honestly say these are the best dang earbuds that I have ever tried. They've got this triple driver system in there. I don't know how they do it. The bass is incredibly rich and incredibly clear. It's got an eight hour battery life, noise cancellation that actually works. And then they just fit really well. Like even if I deck off the top of a boulder, they stay in my ears, they're comfortable. I can't say enough about them. They're just really that good. If you're in the market for new earbuds, hit that link down there. You're going to score yourself a a discount. And I think you're going to be blown away just like I was. All right, let's get back to the video. Something that's, I think, relatable to me and and a lot of people when when we're trying to take on climbs and maybe it's climbs that are at our limit or we think might even be beyond our limit. And you said, quote, I tried not to have any expectations each time I left the ground. If I didn't think about the top, I could concentrate on executing each sequence as smoothly as possible so that when I reached an anchor, it felt more it felt more like a gift than a check mark on a laundry list. And those check marks, those green check marks on, on Instagram and when we post our sends and when we think about them are um, tend to be ever present. I'm thinking about climbing my first 13A this fall and like I think about kind of there's some pressure around that about kind of telling my friends or talking about it on the podcast. And this quote really jumped out about getting to the chains uh, or an anchor being more of a gift than an expectation. And I'm curious how you've come to kind of have that mentality and if you're even able to keep it all the time or if some of the goal kind of outcome oriented stuff can still seep in every once in a while and how you manage that. Yeah, I mean, first of all, No, I cannot always have that mentality and it's something that I strive for. Um, But again, like the thing that I love the most, maybe the most of the feelings in climbing is like that feeling when you get to the top of something 
that you really worked hard towards achieving, like clipping those anchors is just this like unparalleled feeling of bliss for me that, um, it's hard to find in other aspects of life to be quite frank, because it's so rewarding and it gives each climb that I've done that closure of purpose that is like so personally special, um, that I can really, I mean, I can look back at all of those feelings on all the benchmark roots that I've done and remember those so vividly. Um, but I do think that for me, the success has often come in letting go. And that's why I do have hanging on and letting go as a part of my subtitle in Take the Lead, because my success in a lot of the climbs, including like um, I talk about Arabea and the pressure that I had when I was there and we were filming and like there's all this like stress and expectation of doing it to then almost like going back, training, doing these things in the U.S. and going in with like such little expectation, just being there, being in the moment and sending it. And it's like in for my and even like a lot of the climbs that I've done, I can think back to like even pure imagination. Like I remember playing Connect Four with Keith before I was like, OK, and now I'm just going to go and try and make it through the first crux. And then if I make it through the first crux, like I'll be super happy. Um, because I hadn't done it from the ground to the top without taking at that crux or falling. Um, so when I was climbing it and then like made it through that first crux, it was like, oh, wow, everything else is just going to be like this bonus that I'm like adding on top of it. Um, and so it's really within those moments that, um, I have this objective and you break through like this, this objective of getting through a sticky point on the climb. Um, or like... I remember being in Spain with my friend Matilda and it was the end of the day and I'd done a fair bit of like climbs that I was proud of that day. And there was one more that I was like, oh, maybe I'll just go up it and check it out for the next day. And I ended up sending it. And it was kind of like when I'm not thinking about like I want to just like make it to the anchors. Um, For me on climbs, I'll often break them up even to look at like different clipping stances. And that's going to be my checkpoint. Um, or different big rest moments, because when you get to a good rest, then you can almost like reset. Um, and I think that a big part of climbing that can hold me back is like leaving the ground of my project and trying to climb it perfectly, because I think that I have to climb it perfectly in order to send it. But you actually don't like you can mess up a sequence and maybe your right hand's where your left hand is and do an extra like match and then make it through it and you're like oh that was shaky and didn't look so great but you're still on the wall 